In 2010, Dolphin Research Center, a nonprofit research and education facility located in the Florida Keys, was the first to demonstrate that dolphins can imitate without using their eyesight. The center's follow-up study now answers how these intelligent marine mammals are able to accomplish this challenge of blindfolded imitation. The findings were recently published in the prestigious scientific journal Animal Cognition. Research director Dr. Kelly Yakala explains. In our original study, we discovered that dolphins can imitate each other even when they're blindfolded, but we didn't know exactly how they were doing it. We did know they weren't using sight, so the obvious candidate is sound. But in dolphins, that comes in two flavors. They could have recognized the characteristic sound the behavior makes, just like you or I might recognize the sound of hands clapping, or they could have used echolocation, their biological sonar, to see the behavior with sound. In this study, we changed the way the motor behavior sounded by using a human to model the behaviors. Obviously, a person moving in the water sounds very different from a dolphin moving in the water. And the question was how that would affect the dolphin's ability to imitate. With the sound changed, would they still be able to recognize the behaviors to copy them? In the new study, the participating dolphin was a young male named Tanner, who was also tested in the original blindfolded imitation research. The human that modeled the behaviors was Dolphin Research Center's co-founder and chief operating officer, Mandy Rodriguez. For each trial, Tanner was shown a specific hand signal that asked him to imitate whatever Mandy was doing. However, his eyes were covered before Mandy demonstrated a specific motor behavior, so there was no way he could use vision to determine Mandy's actions. Amazingly, Tanner was still able to successfully imitate the behaviors with a high rate of accuracy. The confirmation that the dolphin did indeed use sound was exciting in itself, but how he was using sound was even more intriguing. What we discovered was really interesting. First, yes, they could still imitate the behaviors blindfolded, even with the changed sound. But to do it, they switched strategies. Specifically, when they copied a person blindfolded, they echolocated a whole lot more than when they had copied a dolphin blindfolded. When they had been imitating the familiar sounding dolphin behaviors, they just recognized the sound. But when we gave them the less familiar sounds of a human doing the behaviors, they switched to using echolocation. Finding that Tanner switched sound strategies gives us a key new insight into the dolphin mind. Unlike eyesight, Dolphin echolocation is not typically on. It requires a decision to activate it. That means that Tanner couldn't have just been doing this mindlessly. Instead, he was problem solving. So when his first strategy of recognizing the behavior by sound didn't work, he was flexible enough to seek new information, change strategies, and come at it a different way. The results of this study teach us more about the problem solving and imitation abilities of dolphins, but the implications are even more far reaching. Scientifically, studies like this are really important because so far only humans and dolphins have shown this kind of flexible skill with imitation. But humans and dolphins are separated by about 90 million years of evolution, which means they must have evolved these skills separately. Exploring imitation in dolphins and humans can teach us not only about each individual species, but also has the potential to fill in crucial information about why the ability to imitate ever evolved at all.